Jesus was preaching, and the people were spellbound by what they heard. To proclaim the word of God, as the church tells a priest, is his first duty. Because when you proclaim the word of God, men and women are brought to faith. And by extension, we could say, to proclaim the word of God is the first duty of every Christian, to tell men and women about Jesus, who is the word itself. In today's first reading from the book of Revelation, John is told to take the scroll and swallow it. But in this gesture, John is told to make the word his own, make it a part of him. And he's told to embrace the word and to share it with the people. And it tasted like honey in his mouth. To hear the word of God broken and spoken, the wonderful things that we hear of a God who loves us, and a God who loved us so passionately that he gave us Jesus, his only begotten Son, who himself is the Word. And Jesus tells us of the Father's love. He died, he rose, and he will come again. And he promises each and every one of us eternal life at the end of our journey. That's good news. That's sweetness. That's the beauty of the gospel. We love to hear that. It's honey in our mouth, joy in our hearts. But the angel also says to John, but it will get into your stomach and it will become sour. To become sour, too, many times because the gospel, the word of God, challenges us. Challenges us to respect the dignity and the worth of each person. It challenges at times to take up our cross and follow him. And then it's difficult. It's sour in our mouth. I'm in Toronto these few days to speak on behalf of Catholic Missions in Canada. Catholic Missions in Canada has been proclaiming God's Word since 1908. The Gospel Word is so important that when Catholic Missions in Canada heard of the cries of the poor, of those who were opening up the, the West, the Ukrainians, the Germans, the Polish people, and many times they were deprived of clergy, they were deprived of, of buildings, so that they could hear the word, develop, uh, Catholic missions in Canada came forward to try to provide priests for them, to preach the word, to try to provide chapels where they could go to hear the word, to be nourished and to be fed. And today, Catholic Missions in Canada operates from coast to coast in 28 different dioceses of our country are called mission dioceses. A mission diocese is a diocese that does not have the resources of its own to faithfully carry out the mission of the gospel. So Development and Peace makes available salaries for priests, puts food on their tables sometimes, gas in their cars, provides for lay people, missionary, catechists to hand on the word of God to the children so they will come to have a deep relationship with Jesus. It provides money to educate seminarians for missionary dioceses so they, future priests, can proclaim the gospel. It picks, fix up buildings that are torn down because of the harsh climates and weather in which they live. All of this so that men and women can hear the Word of God. Because the Word of God nourishes us and feeds us. The Word of God is life-giving. The Word of God brings joy to our heart. The Word of God sustains and nourishes us. You and I, all of us, like those people in, who support Catholic missions in Canada, and we thank all of those who have supported Catholic missions in Canada for so many years. We thank because we are not only to listen to the Word of God, but we are to become doers of the Word of God. We are to become doers. And Catholic Missions of Canada puts the Word of God into action, into action 
by the support they give to those who go forth to proclaim God's message of salvation in our name. Today we gather here now to celebrate this Mass. We have broken the Word. You have heard the Word of God. You have been nourished by God's Word. And I trust that it has come to you as honey in your mouth. In a few moments, we'll gather at the altar and we will break bread, which is the body of Jesus. The body of Jesus also nourishes us and feeds us. We're fed by the Word. We're fed from the table of the Eucharist. Because the, to celebrate Eucharist is itself a missionary activity. Because having heard the Word and been nourished by the body of Jesus, we trust and hope and pray that we are changed and transformed so that we who put on Jesus, so it changes us and transforms us, so we become more like Jesus, so we become his hands, his feet, his ears, his eyes, his mouth, who take the gospel message of salvation to the ends of the world. Let us stand now, and let us offer to our God our prayers and petitions this day. Let us pray for our Holy Father, Pope Benedict, and for all priests and bishops, deacons, that they may faithfully proclaim God's word to all the corners of the world. For this we pray to the Lord. The Lord let us pray for missionaries, missionaries at home, and missionaries in foreign lands, that the Lord will watch over them, give them courage and strength in times of difficulty. For this we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear for the sick and the suffering, the aged and the lonely, for all who are troubled this day, pains of mind or body, may the Lord touch them with peace and healing. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. Let us pray for all travelers, whether they travel on the land or the sea or the air, that all travelers may journey in safety, free from injury and accident, and they may receive true Christian hospitality at journey's end. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For all who have died, our relatives and our friends and our benefactors, and especially for those who have died in service to our country in times of war. May the Lord welcome them into the joys of heaven. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord in the silence of our hearts, let us ask the Lord for what we seek and desire in our own lives this day. Good and gracious God, hear the prayers of your people gathered round your altar. What we now ask of you by our faith, please give to us in our daily living. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread to offer. What earth has given in many hands of made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sins.
Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. God of mercy, in this Eucharist we proclaim the death of the Lord. Accept the gifts we present and help us to follow him with love, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Be. Lift up your hearts. Up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, it is our duty and our salvation always and every way to give you thanks to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. He is the Word to whom you made the universe, the Savior who sent to redeem us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he opened his arms on the cross. He put an end to death and revealed the resurrection. In this, he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And so we join the angels and the saints in proclaiming your glory as we sing. 